put it, I don't want to paraphrase you wrong. Uguti, I don't know if you wanted to stop being umzul, but according to my knowledge, <laughs> umzul. I wanted to hear your opinions on um, the current or the new um, king, Misuzu Lugazueltini, and just what has been happening in the kingship and in just uh, the royal family in KZN. From an official perspective, on behalf of um, the general Zulu population, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, the new king, Inkosiyama Zulu, Omisu Zulu, Gazulitin, on his coronation over the weekend. A beautiful ceremony from some of the pictures and the videos I saw. A lot of notable people, local, uh, international. For a lot of people, <laughs> again, this is our lack of just African and cultural knowledge. People that don't know that there are Zulu kings and representatives across the continent. One of them being a, a Zulu representative, a king in Malawi. Uh, I think there may have been another one from Zambia. You know, some people on Twitter were saying things like, you know, hopefully the xenophobia and these things will fall apart. With now people realizing that there are Zulu, let's call them colonies or communities in parts of the African continent that they didn't even know about. Um, beautiful ceremony. Um, <laughs> there were also jokes, uh, by the dog because uh, Umisu Zulu and some of his brothers obviously went to private schools, uh, especially in the Midlands. I think Umisu Zulu went to St. Charles, a private school. Some of the kids may have gone to schools like Kersney and Durban, maybe your Michael House, Hilton. So in some of the interviews you hear when they switch from his Zulu to English, I'm really proud of my brother, Umisu Zulu, you know, I think he's really keen for the throne, and <laughs> which is something new, you know, yeah, but it, yeah, touch, yeah. it touches on the TKZ uh, element of, yeah. They can't now come and put on a fake voice like some politicians we know. Hey, I'd like to thank my brother, uh, Mrs. That's not who you are, dog. Just be yourself. Uh, be authentically you. Um, so that was pretty funny, but cool. Officially, congrats to him uh, on behalf of the Zulu nation. There's still a lot of fights. Some of the princesses and some of the princes have still taken um, this matter to court. To this day, they still believe he's not the rightful king. Uh, and the king should be Prince Smagate. Uh, I stand to be corrected, but I think Prince Smagate is the firstborn son from the first marriage, Yazuelitin. And at some point from the first marriage, I think we touched on this at some point, from the first marriage, uh, Uzuelitin got married under civil. And according to this Roman Dutch law we have, you can't be a polygamist uh, if you have a civil union. You have to dissolve the civil and then only do customary. Um, so I don't know where that's going to go and how that's going to happen. But officially on the record, if you look at everything, Umisu Zulu is officially the king of the Zulus today. Um, my personal opinion now, which is the one that uh, upsets a lot of people, um, I have left uh, the Zulu nation for many reasons, which I've explained before. Part of them being I do not recognize whether Umisu Zulu or his father, Uzueli Tini, uh, or the royal family, I, do, I no longer recognize them as my kings. I no longer recognize the royal family as a family I bowed down to. In the same way when South Africa supposedly left uh, the British colony and the Commonwealth, which it seems we're still a part of, it meant we no longer bowed down to the Queen in England. Uh, I no longer bowed down to the Zulu King. I can recognize and respect him and his title and where he stands in the same way I can respect Cyril Ramaphosa as president of the country. But for me personally, I do not take my directive uh, from them. Uh, my authority figures are not them. Um, I do not reside on Ingonyama Trust land. I do not have a piece of land. Uh, so I cannot even say, well, at least I pay a lease or I have been given by the king or by Induna. Um, outside of speaking the Zulu language, in the same way I speak the English language, I speak Afrikaans uh, as a language of communication and as the most spoken language in this country. I do not and no longer practice Zulu customs. Uh, the belief systems of what the Zulus used to believe in, which sadly enough, Uzuelitin himself was a, was a devout Christian. So he himself did not, as far as I know, follow in the belief systems of the Zulus, believing in etc. In terms of the customary proceedings, I believe he still followed those, but he was a Christian as well. Um, I don't believe in, in orthodox Zulu beliefs. Um, I, I believe the, the Zulu 
royal kingdom has been diluted and has lost its essence. And I think there's a lot of, this is going to go down controversially. There's a lot of clownishness and um, circus behavior in what's happening. If you look at Heritage Day in South Africa on the 24th of September, South Africans go to China malls now, China cities to go and buy African leopard vest, they can't reach China, but go get these pants that were made famous by Maskandi singers. But they like, and they're like, hey, this is my culture. So someone who probably went to a private school who's never slaughtered anything, who doesn't understand his family lineage, uh, who doesn't understand umland Wagazulu, just as a nation, and how Shaga managed to combine tribes, including powerful tribes like under the Zulu nation. They don't understand any of those things. Today, uh, you wear these, 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 it's like a costume, which you don't really wear every day, you know. Hip hop is a culture, Kwaito is a culture. It's, it's something you live and breathe. But you wear these things almost as a show, as and when it suits you, uh, to try and, and reflect something that you're not really living. Because every other day you're wearing a suit, Every other day you're dressed in Western clothing. 80% of the time you're probably speaking English at work or with your family. Um, and then you're going to come and pretend to be Zulu now because it's trending. In the same way we're going to pretend to be pro whatever party wins 2024. In the same way we all pretend to be a united South Africa when we win a, a rugby world cup. Um, when we beat the All Blacks. So I think a lot of essence has been lost. We saw a speech given by Umisu Zulu himself where he was struggling to read Isi Zulu and he even asked to Umango Sutub Telezi, the prince, if he could please carry on in English. Um, Misu Zulu himself, before he was brought in now, uh, had a partner and they had two children. A partner he had not married. I'm not sure if he had paid damages for the lady. All of those things were fast-tracked because now he's going to become the king. And this is not a young chap. Uh, I think he is in his 40s, which means... He'd been living a normal life, he had kids, and he was just living his life. And now he has to pretend now for the sake of now he's going to become king. Um, I think it's very disrespectful to, to what the Zulu nation is meant to stand for and what Tukuba Um Zulu means. And it seems like being a real Zulu is only for Aban Basemakaya. Be, be loose, be, be fui in como, you know, eating herbs, mabekula, be laleli zangoma. And those of us who are now Model C, private school, English, travel the world, all of a sudden, when we don't actually understand the live reality of the people, uh, we're so majorly detached from the people, and it's just nice to say, you know, people were teasing who to Tuzane Zuma for getting on a platform. Uh, with an accent, you know. Um, and these are meant to be the leaders of, of the majority black people. From a political perspective, of course, we can look to governance and he's got a father to mentor him. Um, but now for something that is cultural and that is meant to be the core of your existence, to have leaders who may not really live the reality of your life, who get a nice... Uh, budget from government, which is given, paid by taxpayers. A lot of them who are not Zulu themselves, where the king gets a 60 million, 70 million rand a year. The royal palaces are taken care of by the Gozulu Natal government. Um, the wives of uh, Misu Zulu's father are taken care of. And then uh, in Gonyama Trust, which is close to 3 million hectares, a lot of that land is given to mines and businesses and farms that are not even owned by Zulu people. And how true is it that the NC wants to dissolve the Ingonyama Trust land with 3 million hectares? So Ingonyama Trust, just the parts where they lease out to white, Indian and foreign business interests, it raises between 180 million to 200 million rand a year. Where does that money go? Is it uh, being invested in the Zulu nation? Uh, are they building schools that teach natively in Isi Zulu? Are they building a Zulu economy where every Zulu item you see um, has to be trademarked and patented? You cannot wear Zulu unless it comes from a Zulu factory. Um, are they building Zulu structures, Zulu libraries? Are they exporting the Zulu culture to the world, uh, as an example? Um, 
it becomes tragic for me uh, what's happening. And those are part of the reasons why I was raised Zulu and I'm very thankful. And I'm very thankful and I'm very thankful in particular. But the essence of where this comes from and where it's meant to be going, I think has been lost, especially by some of the people who are meant to be leadership. And I think a lot of the masses have been misled because people at the top just want to Mali, just like our politicians do. And for those reasons, I cannot, for my integrity and my self-respect, I cannot continue following those authority figures.